Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Today it's about the Spacer plugin here, which is a modular reverb or delay effect by Spectral Audio. It's available as VST and VST3 and I think AU on the Mac. Um, and I think it costs uh, 69 bucks, so it's not super expensive and exactly replicates how I use reverbs in Bitdeck Studio. I don't use just one reverb or one delay. I combine multiple delays, multiple reverbs in the chain of Bitwig Studio. But here you have this basically in one plugin. You have multiple modules. As you can see your convolution reverb, just an algorithmic reverb, a crane reverb, a crane delay, a normal delay. And here at the end, you have a chorus and utilities to just boost, boost some frequencies or uh, increase here the harsh time, harsh effects. We have more like a stereo effect. As I think harsh is just delaying one channel, the left or the right channel. You can delay it by some milliseconds and you get some kind of stereo effect with this. Um, so yeah, you, come, you have multiple modules here. You can also take these modules and move them around. So exactly like in the, the, the chain of Bitwig Studio where you can move certain plugins around and try out certain combinations of um, of orders of plugins of delays and reverbs and so on. And you can do this here. There's also um, a dice button at, at the top here. So you can click that. And every time you click it, you have randomized parameters. It would be nice um, when this plugin had some kind of lock feature where you can right click on a uh, on a parameter here and say lock this parameter and then when this is locked for instance the stamping and i click randomize here this parameter doesn't change this would be nice to have for maybe for the mix knobs here or maybe for uh when you have your crane reverb there the pitch the pitch section here you don't want to change the pitch at all um, so you can lock this and um, all these audiority reverbs have this so i'm used to it so it would be nice to have some locking feature for the dice button um, or maybe the opposite way around where you can change here uh, what's randomized and what not so you can say please randomize only this or only this or maybe right click and say dice this this button right on this parameter um, this could be also an option. Um, we have also here um, some interface sizing options, only three, so it's not uh, resizable at all. You just change change it to three different settings. I have always here the biggest setting because I'm half blind. I'm pretty old, I'm a pretty old guy. I, uh, I need big as possible. And it's also nice for making videos, of course, to show people this nice interface. Um, and by the way, this video is not sponsored. Um, they offered me um, a sponsored video, but I declined more or less because I want to keep this um, this channel uh, sponsored free as possible. You saw me using this plugin before in streams and so on. So I'm really liking this plugin. I'm trying it out and it really goes down my workflow path, I want to say. Um, so yeah. I want to show you this how how I use this and um, what's what's the fuss about it. <laughs> um, so now we know that we can replace or reorder all of these modules here, and we have also your input gain, mix, and output gain. And I found that um, also a borrow in my Discord mentioned this uh, already that when you combine multiple of these modules and mix in a lot of these modules. Um, you will find out that the output gain is going down rapidly. Um, so you have to compensate with this here with increasing the output gain a lot. Um, but it's not a problem for me so much because it's it's usually how audio processing works, right? You just uh, add one effect and maybe you have a stereo effect and then you decrease the loudness for some reason and you have to compensate for that. I don't think it needs here an auto compensate or auto gain feature would be nice to have, but I don't really need it. I, I'm i happy with just having this output gain here. Um, so that's that. So maybe we just disable here some of these modules because you can listen to them individually and there's also a solo button on these modules. So you can just, you know, when you have a chain of effects here, multiple things happening at once, you can just solo out one module and just 
focus just on this module to tweak it to your liking and then go back and listen to it in the combination of all the other modules. And also the audio flow um, goes as follows. As you can see, there's a small arrow here at the top. Um, this is where the audio goes in. So when you have here a um, piano stage plug in playing in front, The audio goes straight in here. So this is the first module in the chain. Then it goes to the convolution, then it goes to the crane reverb, then it goes down here to this second delay, which is switched off at the moment in the crane delay here, and then the output utilities. And then finally you can hear it over your headphones, right? So this is the out here. So in, out, and this is the flow. Um, so what I usually found the best is to probably start with the convolution first to give it some kind of texture um, before you go into the reverb and make it bigger. And the convolution reverb here features a lot of different types of convolution things. You can also drag in, of course, your own impulse responses to this plug in here. Um, it features drag and drop, which is nice. Uh, but you have already here a lot of different things, for instance, hall here, and then you can go for jazz club, for instance, and then it crashes, which is really nice um, because this never happened before. And uh, now when I press record on OBS, of course, it crashes. Um, so <laughs> let's do that again. Um, let's go to hall and dark hall, maybe. <clears throat> switch this off and then bring the mix up maybe bring the size down to the original size of the impulse response also decay to 100% so this is just a pure uh, convolution effect so the problem of convolution is that it's just a sample and every time you play something the audio goes through the same sample again and again. So it's super highly static. That's the, the drawback of convolution, that it gives you a really original, authentic sound, but it doesn't modulate. Um, it's just the same sample over and over again. So it becomes static over a certain amount of time. Or if you do ambient and you have a long drone sound going through this convolution reverb, it gets, it, it gets static or stale at a certain point and you can hear it. So it's a sample and it doesn't move that well. And when you use then an algorithmic reverb like Valhalla reverbs or Valhalla Supermassive, it sounds completely different. It's organic, it moves, it changes over time. And it, you know, it's a completely different feel. But this convolution gives you a nice authentic feel. So it really sounds like we have a piano sitting in a dark hall and then you bring down the mix knob here it sounds like you, you are a bit closer to the piano so you get a more like a di direct sound but you can still hear the dark hall in the background so the mix knob on a convolution is for me always like an yeah like a positioning move parameter you move yourself to closer to the source of the audio signal in this case here it's the piano like we are far away from the piano just only hear the reflections of the dark hall and now we are pretty close to the piano Until we are super close. So this convolution is nice to give your sound a bit of texture, a bit of realistic texture. And then you can say you want to go into, let's say, a crane delay here. So we switch this on. So now we have, after this realistic texture, we get this crane effect. 
And of course, we can change the delay times here, um, sync to the BPM of the project. You can change the spray of the grains. So grains, grains are basically just small little audio snippets uh, from your audio signal replayed. Um, so it's a small looper, if you want to call it that way. And you can change how big the grain size is or how big the looping size is. And the spray size, I think it changes. Um, it changes the size here uh, between 200 and 96 milliseconds. So it changes the grain size over time. So you have smaller and bigger grain grains. And this already brings in a lot of movement to the static convolution reverb here. And by the way, we have here some buttons on the left. So you can also just disable this visual here. And you get the pitch and the randomize for the pitch. So you can pitch it up here by 12 semitones. So every repetition is pitched up 12 semitones, which gets pretty high fast. You can also use something in between, but maybe seven semitones, which is a perfect fifth that, that could work. But everything in between, yeah, it gets dissonant fast. So you have to play around with the feedback so it doesn't, you know, advance too fast or too, too much. So it's, when the feedback is low, you only have maybe one step that, so you have your original audio signal and then one audio signal pitched up three semitones and then it's done. But when you increase the feedback, you have much, much longer uh, feedback iterating over this um, transposition here or this um, yeah audio pitch so you get this constant pitching up so most of the times i'm just using perfect um perfect intervals like 12 or maybe five or seven but everything in between gets gets pretty fast pretty pretty dis dissonant Then we also have an EQ here. You can say we only want to have a grain reverb in this upper frequency range. And this is also true here for all the other modules. So we have an EQ on all of these modules and also a second page here for, uh, for some parameters, right? So you have um, on off soloing EQ and a second page of parameters and also a dice module here. How great is that? And like I said, when you use here the solo button, this is completely switched off. You only hear the grain delay. So you can completely focus on the grain delay itself and play around with it. Maybe use the dice here. And when you like it, then go back to or switch solo off and then you can hear how it sounds with the convolution in the first stage. Maybe I switch here uh, this pedal on. So now that we have here crane delay, we can use then after this a reverb maybe. So switch this on, maybe solo this out. And this is just a normal algorithmic um, reverb. Um, you change the decay setting here, which is probably the feedback. The room size, which changes probably the um, delay settings of the all pass devices inside of this. And pretty important, the mod and the mod rate here, which changes the delay times of each of these um, all pass uh, patches inside of this device, uh, which gets you this kind of 
pitch modulation. So you can hear it when I slow this down. Right? But you don't want to overdo this. You want to stay in a key. So I'm usually dialing down the mod depth here and also the mod rate. I do pretty slowly because I do ambient and I want to have long drones and I want to have slow, uh, slow modulations over time. The damping probably um, removes some of the upper frequencies, but you can also do this here with the with the EQ if you want to. So, so you only have reverb here in the mid part, or it depends on what kind of input sound you have. If you have a low pad, then you probably want to have reverb on top of this low pad and want you want to add something on top. And when you have higher pitched sounds like this piano here, probably want to have something here in the mid part so it amplifies a bit of the mid frequencies just to complement the frequency spectrum. Pre-delay, it's up to you, of course. With, for me, it's always 100%, because I like white sounds. I don't know how the diffusion um, is implemented in this plugin. I guess it's also playing around with some um, additional RPAS devices just to make the sound or the delay, uh, because Reverb is just delays, multiple delays, um, to adjust delay times or maybe add additional RPAS devices just to make the sound dense. Um, I don't know how it's implemented, but all it does basically is it makes the sound probably more dense and um, if you dial this down it probably sounds more like a delay and this sounds more like a reverb. So now that we have this reverb here running, we can bring in all the other things here and bring the mix down because we want to hear also dry signal from the grain delay and the dry signal from the convolution. This is pretty powerful. Don't use it all the time at 100%. I really like to have certain bits or sounds of all of these modules at the end coming out. So I want to hear something from the grain delay on top of the reverb. So it makes the sound more dense, in my opinion, when you just mix this here in parts in. Right, so you can still hear something from the grain delay. When you have to set 100%, you only hear this, basically. Sure, the grain delay goes into the reverb and then the reverb has a different output sound, of course, but you don't hear all the nice little bits from the grain delay itself. So I really like to use your mix knob and only a mix these modules in and parts. And also when you are done with your uh, patch, you can also use the mix knob, the overall mix knob, and I usually go around 80% around that with my ambient stuff. Because I want to hear a bit of the original tri signal of the piano, which sounds really sounds nice. This is the tri signal. It's pretty loud, huh? This is pretty quiet. This is what I meant. You have to compensate with the output gain a lot sometimes. So now we have already a long reverb happening here, but we can still do more. We can activate here the grain reverb. And there's also pitch here, exactly like on the crane delay. Um, I think the crane reverb works the same as the crane delay, but here you have like more moving parts uh, and uh, 
that brings in more diffusion and more like a reverb sound. But in general, reverbs and delays are more or less the same. They just, yeah, in different, the difference is basically just some timings, reverb timings or delay timings and how much delays you are use and how big the feedback is. So maybe let's just listen to that. So we have here also the decay setting, which is probably just the uh, feedback. Oh, we have also separate feedback here. Can increase the size, or you can see it increases the size of some delays. You can hear this with the crackling. So there are some all pass devices in there, probably. We have also here a mod rate and a mod depth. Let's use that. Let's make it slow. It brings in the movement. EQ, maybe EQ out the low end and the top end a bit. And just this alone sounds really nice, Imo. style this down at to 50% around 50% and bring all the other modules beforehand I like it. Maybe pitch up here. So the pitch again, we probably want to have a lower feedback so it doesn't go too far with the pitch. So with the pitch here, you get this shimmer effect. So you have to dial in your decay setting and feedback carefully because it can go yeah it can build up over time so maybe bring this down here so if you like this shimmer effect these upper tones these pitched up tones then then we can leave this in here and combine it with the rest. Let's see how this sounds. Nice. And because this is not enough, we can add another delay to just use the signal we just created and delay it even more. So just solo this out here and see how this sounds. So it's, it's just a delay, right? And you have delay times here. You can also switch this to milliseconds, but usually I just want to have BPM here, so I have divisions of my current BPM setting. And again, the feedback decides how long this echoes out. The EQ here also cut off the low end, a bit of the high end. So this also sounds nice on its own. So now we use this on top of all these other modules, maybe 
Just bring the mix down here, feedback a bit down so it's not too long. Just see how this sounds. It's almost like a synthesizer for me using these reverbs. For ambient, all you need is just reverbs. If you want to do ambient, just use reverbs. It doesn't matter what, sh what kind of synthesizer you use or what kind of input signal. Uh, you just can fart into your microphone and put a reverb on it and it's, it's a drone sound, right? So it's, yeah, it doesn't matter what kind of input sound you have. Um, all you need is a great reverb. So if you see this basically as a synthesizer, um, then it is. So then we have on top of that, to make it even more fancy, we can put a chorus on that. And chorus basically is just multiplying the audio signal um, into multiple, uh, multiple iterations of the same sound and then applying uh, delay times to it. So we have here six, six multi multiplying the signal by six times, and then we do um, 76 milliseconds separation time between each of these voices, I think. And then you can spread it out here even, even more to, um, to the left and the right channel. And you can do this with the rate here of synch or synchronized uh, to the BPM setting of your track. So when we only listen to that, is this possible? No, that's no. So we switch this off here. Yeah. So this is how the chorus sounds. It's probably too fast. So make it slower. the modulation depth here. I think the modulation depth and the modulation speed should be close to each other, I don't know. So you can make the signal wide if you want to. So we mix this in here with the dry signal. faster rate and a lower depth is also nice. And here it can be beneficial to just switch to rate. Uh, so it's not synchronized, so it doesn't sound too gritty or too on point. So you can use here some 3 hertz. So it wobbles around freely over your track. Okay, and then we have utilities here. I don't know what all these parameters are, but I think presence is probably some upper frequencies. Air is probably something around 10K or something. So just EQ boost. I could be wrong but it sounds to me like this. Then there's saturation, it's probably some distortion. Slight distortion. Dimension, dimension mix and size, I think it's something similar to um, 
the chorus where you split the signal into multiple audio parts and then delay it differently. And then you have the half time here, which probably changes the delay timing of this dimension. H, I have no idea. It's probably an EQ. Also to remove certain frequencies so it sounds like an old tape or an old audio recording. So it's probably some random EQ setting. Uh, stereo spread and the Haas mix here. So it's all about boosting upper frequencies, adding a bit of uh, harmonics, um, creating multiple signals, delaying these signals on the left and the right channel to make it stereo and spread out. Also your Haas time, it's all about that in the utilities um, box here also chorus itself so you can make make this reverb sounding so wide as possible with all the uh possible effects you have um and plus of course all these reverb and delay modules here so we can now switch everything on and have probably a super nice big long ass stereo wide reverb So I think that's it for this video. Uh, give this plugin a try. I think there's a trial version. Try it out for yourself. It's really fun to use. And like I said, it's exactly how I use reverbs inside of Bitwig Studio, combining delays, reverbs, reordering, um, using chorus effects and so on. Um, it's really, really fun to play around with this. So link is in the description. If you have questions, please leave it in the comments. Leave a like subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and bye.